Hello there. Welcome to a special bonus edition of the Culture of Life show. Uh, I'm here remotely with Father Shannon Bouquet. Uh, he's uh, traveling right now, but it's a momentous day on this Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, the Supreme Court has finally released uh, officially the decision in the case Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health, completely overturning uh, Roe v. Wade and uh, Casey versus Planned Parenthood, which is a momentous occasion uh, for uh, the pro-life movement in the U.S. So, Father, if you'd like to just give us a little message about that. Yes, and Tad, it's just good to be with you. I'm over here actually participating in a summit on defending the family. And so this morning when uh, the announcement came in, of course, you know, everyone was so excited and, you know, filled with great joy, you know, because uh, for many here, at, at least at this conference, uh, I've known for a number of years have been actively involved uh, in defending life and family and trying to promote uh, the, the, the culture of life. And so today, you know, it's pe some people thought we would never see this that in their lifetime, but today's decision of the uh, released decision, final decision of, of the Supreme Court uh, is a day to celebrate because the lives of many unborn children in the United States will be saved. Uh, many of the states, uh, like my own state of Louisiana, you know, uh, has now uh, have as uh, abortion is illegal. So as of 10 o'clock this morning with the release of that decision, abortion uh, uh, opportunity in the state of Louisiana ended. So lives are being saved right now, Tad. And I think that's something that, you know, our, all of our audience uh, needs to uh, be aware of that life is being saved. And so, but w with all that great no uh, joy, because, you know, when you think about Father Marx, our, our founder, you know, that began in 1972. So even before Roe, you know, HLI has been involved, you know, in promoting the culture of life. And so here we are, you know, this, this so many decades later, having uh, fought the good fight, uh, ran that race, worked alongside many pro-life leaders uh, on every level of our, of our society, trying to change uh, minds and hearts and laws. And today we have a momentous occasion, and it's one that is going to reverberate not only across the United States, but as a global pro-life organization, it's going to make an impact around the world. It's going to say that uh, anti-life laws anti, uh, and pro-abortion laws can change. So uh, I'm really um, uh, happy today and excited to be able to, uh, to celebrate this news, but also you know, to encourage us. We, now we have to do more. Because as we know, in the states uh, where the abortion is still going to be legal, the, the, the need to support legislators and other pro-life leaders will be of utmost importance. And also, we're going to have to step up our responsibility in our pregnancy care centers and our help to women in every state. You know, even in the pro-life states where the laws will not allow abortion, we need to exercise the importance of um, providing uh, assistance. So our pregnancy care centers, our, our, our safe havens for, for, for mothers and their children, uh, you know, everything that we can do, we need to do to show that the culture of life truly is a culture of life and that we're going to do the yeoman's work to help our brothers and sisters in need. And so this is a, a moment for us to say, yes, we are grateful uh, today to celebrate on this wonderful solemnity of the Sacred Heart. Of course, you know, we're grateful to Almighty God um, and to those who have fought the good fight and brought us to this moment. But now we have to go forward with the same, the same passion, the same energy uh, to continue to keep, you know, in the states where uh, pro-life laws now exist and abortion is illegal, keep it that way in the states where it is currently legal to uh, support those who are working to change those laws. And we also need to have a conversation about what's the impact now to the global. So how does U.S. aid, how do the United uh, Nations, how does funding go from the United States into other works and agencies? So there's still work to be done. So this is by no means over, but it is a wondrous day, Tad. And uh, I, I know that today the lives of little boys and girls uh, in their mother's wombs are, uh, if they could uh, hear me now and hear the great news, like so many people are announcing, they're leaping for joy. Why? Because they will live. They will live because of this decision today. So there's a lot to celebrate. Yeah, and actually, Father, it's important to note that this year, the Feast of the Sacred Heart also falls on what is normally the uh, solemnity of the Nativity of John the Correct. Baptist. So right. we have a double reason um, a double feast day on a wonderful day to celebrate. Um, and as you said, the little children leaping in their parents' womb would just be like uh, the little John the Baptist leaving in Elizabeth's exactly. womb. Exactly. Amen. Now, there's, there's never a coincidence in how all these things unfold. And so we, we must see the spiritual side of this, Tad. 
and, and, and recognize that we've received a great blessing. And I would close with this, you know, to realize that we, we are at a crossroad in the United States. We have been given a moment to undo a great wrong. And today, a great wrong, a great injustice against human life has been uh, redeemed in a sense of uh, it's been changed. And so, but, but we have to realize that this work now has to move forward. And, uh, and so, uh, and as a country, we need to regain our moral compass, defending the family, promoting the natural family, uh, defending life at every, every stage. So there's so much that still needs to be done. So it, it's, a, it's a moment of, to, of, of celebratory joy, and it's a moment knowing, hey, okay, all right, let's get back to work. And that's kind of what happened at the conference this morning. You know, everyone was uh, euphoric and just celebrating the decision, and then there was just this pause and saying, okay, back to the conference. In other words, we have work to do, so we gotta continue to fight the good fight. So let us, uh, to, uh, to all of our listeners, let's keep praying for each other. Let's pray for all the people that are involved in the pro-life cause, and let us pray that this decision today, you know, will change many hearts and minds and, and help re, you know, reorient our own country, you know, to, to see the importance of life and to defend life from its very beginning to its natural end, and then to have that uh, one, wonderful uh, understanding reverberate across the world. So that's my prayer today, and that was my prayer this morning during Mass. So Ted, thank you for taking time, and I'm so grateful that I, I was able to step out the conference for a little while to, to meet with you and, and, to, and to share this little moment of, uh, of announcement with our, our listeners and our supporters. Absolutely, Father. It's definitely an occasion to rejoice and celebrate, uh, to thank God, and to rededicate, like you said, uh, to redouble our efforts now. Amen. Um, going forward. Amen. So thank Amen. you, Ted. Have thank a great you. day. You too, Father. And thank you all for watching. Keep on living the culture of life. God bless.